The following is a presentation of CUTV Sports and CUTV Sports One. Welcome to the Gary Dunn Show for October 24th, 2017. I'm your host, Gary Smith. On today's show, we're going to talk to Coach Dunn and take a look back at last weekend's game up at the shores of Lake Erie against Gannon. Then we're going to take a look ahead at Mercyhurst's upcoming week's opponent. We're going to look at scores and standings all across this great conference of ours and talk uh, about 25 minutes of Vulcan football. Coach, welcome once again. A big smile on your face. Great win on Saturday up, uh, up in Erie. Yeah, great to be back for another week. Really, really proud of our guys. It was, it was a great weekend for Cal football. Our guys battled and competed to the, to the last play of the game and, and came out on top. Really, really proud of their efforts. Yeah, another game, Coach. I tell you what, if you look at, if you look at our uh, analytics on YouTube, the, the views just keep going up and up and up and up. So uh, thank you, I guess, because like I said, it's, uh, people are watching up, up until the very end. And that was a heck of a college football game for both teams. I mean, I thought it was one of those games, you know, both teams came out fired up. Um, beautiful day up in Erie. You don't really expect that when you see you're playing uh, up in Gannon on October 21st or 22nd, whatever it was, to get a 71-degree day and, and sunny and beautiful. But, you know, if you're, you're putting out a poster for college football, that, that's the backdrop, I think. Yeah, it's kind of been the story of us all year, finding a way to get it done at the end of the game. And, and our guys have, have competed for 60 minutes. And, and it's a tough league. And, and Gannon's a really, really talented football, probably one of the best running backs in the country. And we were able to contain him. And, and, and you know, he got some yards, but they were hard, hard yards every time. And uh, the offense played better. You know, Mike here had a great day. Tom Green had a, had a special day. Luke Smorey had a good day. We, you know, we fought through some injuries and, and were able to put some points up on the board. And, and really, special teams, I'm sure we'll get into all three phases, but special teams really lifted us on Saturday. So it was a great weekend up in Erie, and, and we're moving on to the next one and got a tough Mercy Hurst team coming in here. Well, we'll start looking back at this week. We'll look at the offense. And, Coach, they had, a, I think it was Military Appreciation Day, and they had a couple of Humvees out front. And after about the first uh, quarter and a half, I thought they were going to have to call the Air Force in because your <laughs> offense was yeah, putting the ball up in the air. Mike here had the sixth best um, yardage in a game for California history. And, I mean, it was just nice to see he was getting, the, getting a lot of protection from the line and, you know, receivers finding space and just going up and down the field. Yeah, I thought our offensive coaches and, and Coach Chad Salisbury had a great plan going into it. You know, they're a, a one-high team. They like to load the box and not number you in the run game. And our plan was to throw it. Uh, would have liked it to ran a little better than we did, but, you know, Mike was on. And when Mike's on, he's, he's one of the best quarterbacks in the country. And, and when he got time to throw those two receivers out there and, and, you know, another guy, Craig Thompson, stepped up and made a big touchdown catch. When Mike's got time, he's, he's really good. And uh, just to happen with the way we competed and battled, um, you know, Tom Green had a, a special day. We've been banged up at receiver, and, and for him to kind of get healthy and, and have the day that he did, but credit the offensive line, credit Mike, and the running backs did a great job in protection as well. There was a couple times on two of our touchdowns that, that we were getting pressure, and Jalen Bell hung in there and, and picked a guy up and, and it, you know, was able to allow us to have success. You mentioned Tom Green. He had over 200 yards receiving and two touchdowns in that game, and you just mentioned you'll see on the highlights in a little bit the one long touchdown you did see, you know, Mike stepping into the pocket, getting that protection, you're just getting enough. Right. It's, a, it's, it's a game of inches, it really is. It's either inches on the ground or inches for protection, and he stood in there and delivered a strike to Tom. Yeah, it, and, you know, Jalen Bell was a big part of that. Um, but Mike's special, and, and Mike put us in some really good situations. I thought our game plan was really good. I thought Coach Salisbury called a great game, and, and things were just clicking, and, and that's kind of when – when things are going well offensively, that's kind of what we can do. When we kind of get it rolling and our guys are getting lined up and they're playing hard, we can be very explosive. Uh, you know, we just got to fight through those those times when we don't have, you know, success. And, and I thought the guys did that Saturday. You know, the defensive side starts off uh, once again, uh, uh, pick six. And, you know, it seems like a uh, majority of the games we've seen at least a, a pick six or a pick far down the field to get a quick touchdown. But I thought that was huge because the crowd was, was into it early in that game. That was the first drive of the game. And, you know, that pick six kind of quieted the crowd and, and you know, got all the momentum on, on your sideline. Yeah, it really lifted us up. Anytime early you can get something good to happen on the road, it's going to help you. Mm -hmm. And when you're playing on the road, 
uh, I think it was the third play of the game, and Lamont McFadder jumps in front of an out route and, and really you know, takes it to the house, really got us ignited, and then we, you know, we kick off and do a great job there. Um, I thought our defense played well all day. Gannon presents some problems, not only with you know, having a running quarterback, but they got the leading rusher in the nation, and, and he, he's a really, really good player. But our guy stepped up, to the, stepped up to the task and did a great job of containing them. He really didn't have any big runs. Mm -hmm. He had a couple 10, maybe a 15. Uh, but he's been ripping everybody in the league. You know, he had 250 some against Slippery Rock. He had 200 plus against Seton Hill. You know, he's been he's been doing a really nice job. And I thought our guys played really, really well on that side of the ball. Well, not only that containing it, but also stepping up him because that guy's like a freight train. And you know, I'm sitting in the truck, and you can kind of hear the crowd. And, but you could hear a couple of those goal line plays, the crack of the pads. And yeah. like I said, I thought the defense did a great job of just keeping him, you know, contained because that's a guy. You know, if he gets loose, that changes the complexion of the game. Yeah, we, we made him earn every yard. I don't think there was one time where we didn't make him earn the, the yardage that he got. Um, just the overall team effort on defense. You know, you, late in the game was one of my favorite plays. They, they throw a little screen pass out to him, and he gets maybe five or six yards. But we had 11 hats running to the football and, and getting him down. And that was kind of the message, and, and our guys did a great job. You know, Gannon's a good offense. They got a good quarterback. They'll do some wildcat stuff, and, and they present some problems. They run some options, some triple option, do some things that, that other teams don't do, so we haven't seen it. I thought our guys really, really played well, and we played well mentally, which was, was great to see. Yeah, I thought the team did a good job of adjusting to the couple times that, you know, Gannon would rotate a different quarterback in there for different looks, and, you know, there was no panic. It wasn't, you know, sometimes you see that and you see the defense just kind of look like what's going on, but, you know, your guys were ready, said, okay. You're going to take the yeah. snap? Now have at it. <laughs> yeah, we, we preached to our defense playing the next play. No matter what happened on the, on the last play, whether it was a good play or a bad play, move on, that's over with. And, and I thought that was probably the best we did that. We gave up a couple big plays. And, they, you know, hey, Gannon's a good offense. they got talented kids. They're going to make some plays. But don't worry about that. Play the next one. And, and you know, it, it really paid itself forward. And on the third phase of the game, special teams, you know, won the field position battle. And also, as it comes down to so often, you know, well, Brazil makes a kick early in the game, and that at three points ended up being the margin of victory because Gannon's kicker at the last uh, 30 seconds missed one wide right, and Kyle well, goes home happy. It got blocked again. Okay. Uh, I think, think that's our sixth or seventh nice. block kick. Uh, Cam Tarver did a great job. And Coach Wilson, you know, he was telling us in the office how he was coaching Cam on what to do on their field goal team because how they protected it. And he got through and got a piece of that last one, and, and that is huge. We, we value every point, and we try and take away points, and – and we work on it every Monday. And for us to get another, I think it's five or six weeks in a row, we've blocked the kick, a uh, big part of the game. But special teams overall were, were phenomenal. Our kickoff team really stood up. Malik Wilson's a, a young man that's a redshirt freshman that had a great day on our kickoff team. Playing a lot of young guys on kickoff, and I thought our energy was different. Um, our kickoff return team did a great job. You know, we pinned them down inside the 20 twice. Just all of special teams was was phenomenal on Saturday. And we're going to need the same thing this week because Mercyhurst has got a great special teams unit. It was a great afternoon in Erie, Pennsylvania. Let's take a look back at the highlights from this past week in Atlanta. Then after the break, we'll take a look at this upcoming week's opponent, the Mercyhurst Lakers. You're watching the Gary Dunn Show right here on CUTV. Deep is just going to get this snap off. He's going to go throw. That's going to be intercepted. That's number seven, Lamont McFadder. McFadder will just easily prance his way into the end zone for the California Touchdown. This one's going to be kept by Keith. Keith finds a hole. He's going to be tackled. And they're going to call this one a touchdown. He's going to get this one off. He has a few wide receivers. He's going to be pressured. He's going to scramble out to his right. He has a receiver open in the end zone. That's going to be a California touchdown. Tell your mom, pa, and brother in law. Here. Fakes the handoff to Jalen Bell. He's going to go long to Smory, or that's going to be Tom Green. Tom Green catches it and has a wide open field. One pass, one touchdown to Tom Green. And it's actually going to be a pass. Palka open. He's going to bump off a Vulcan defender, make his way into the end zone just like that. Brazil, his kick is up. Old Reliable comes out. Three wide receivers to his left, one to his right as well. He's going to go long. He has Smory. Smory jumps up. He grabs it over the Gannon defender. Three receivers to Keith's right. 
Jones in the backfield. They're going to go long again. He has a receiver. It's going to be caught over the shoulder. A very impressive catch for again and touchdown. It's going to go to Jones. Jones puts his head down, but he is denied. The helmet's going to be off. The ball is going to be in the end zone. This is going to be a Golden Knights touchdown. On this third down, Michael Keir drops back. He has a few men in the end zone. He's going to go to Tom Green. Tom Green brings that one in for a Vulcans. Touchdown, Tom Green. Game is on the foot of number 46. Cartrell and he shanks it far right, way far right. That'll be the ball game. Live Vulcan football all season long on CUTV Sports 1, your home for California Vulcans football. Dylan, what's wrong, man? I still know how my family back home in Buchanan, West Virginia can watch our stuff up here. They can follow us on Twitter or they can like us on Facebook. Awesome. What about our sports? How can they watch that? They could watch it live right on our YouTube channel. Awesome, man. Thanks. You're welcome. Vulcan football is back. August 31st versus Ohio Dominican. September 9th versus Cheney. September 16th at Millersville. September 23rd versus Seton Hill. September 30th at Slippery Rock. October 14th versus Clarion. October 21st at Gannon. October 28th versus Mercyhurst. November 4th at Edinburgh. November 11th at East Stroudsburg. Catch all the action live with your home of the Vulcans. CU TV Sports 1 on YouTube and radio on 91.9 FM WCAL. Do you want information on the 2017 Vulcan football team? Look no further than the Gary Dunn Show. Chip, I was really proud of our efforts, especially from our senior class. It had been through a lot, and for those guys to walk out of here with the uh, PSAC championship. Coach looks back on last week's game and looks ahead to the upcoming opponent. You know, we're really starting over and trying to build that foundation for the 2017 season. Don't miss Vulcan highlights, PSAC standings, schedules, and much, much more. is going to drop back in the pocket and he's going to look to throw. California actually stripped the ball on that one. We're going to see who came up with the ball, but they're motioning that California gets the ball back. And now Nick Grissom puts his head down and a big run from him, just putting his head down, a punishing run even as Nick Grissom gets into the end zone. He's going right and he does. He has some space in the middle of the field. John Franklin the third, getting California on the board yet again. Here now dropping back, and he's looking to throw down the middle of the field over to Gary Brown. Gary Brown has some space down the field. It looks like he was just going to walk into the end zone. And Altavia now going out to his left, and he's going to throw a big hit. Jawan Turner is going to pick that one up and get a touchdown. As he, nice little play action fake. And Michael Keir has some space in the middle of the field. And Michael Keir's going to get into the end zone. A long touchdown run. Michael Keir just showing his athleticism. California now trying to put some points up on the board as Michael Keir throws the ball over to Gary Brown. Gary Brown, see if he's brought down. Now they're going to give it to. Gary Brown this time, and Gary Brown is going to stay on his feet. Gary Brown gets into the end zone. And welcome back to the Gary Dunn Show for uh, the week of October 24th. I'm Gary Smith, and this is Coach Dunn, of course. And uh, we just took a look at last year's game against Mercyhurst, a late season game up um, a little further from the shores of Lake Erie than Gannon, but uh, an exciting game. You saw it was a 55, I think, 14 win uh, in a game which 
you know, your offense pretty much had its way with Mercyhurst, but that was 350 <laughs> some odd days ago. A, lot, a lot's changed. We were talking offset, and Coach, you know, Mercyhurst, pretty solid ball club. Absolutely. Uh, sitting at 4-4 four and four right now and, and really playing well. Uh, you know, it's funny when you look at their schedule and their games, every game has been decided by less than, than w one score. Um, you know, they've won some by three, lost some by three. You know, I think their, their biggest defeat was by eight points. Um, tough, tough team. They, they're very physical. They're a lot like us. Uh, mm -hmm. they, they're great on special teams. They've got a physical offense. They've got a defense that doesn't make mistakes, doesn't give up big plays. Um, really, really solid club, and, and their coaching staff's doing a great job. Got them playing hard. And that's been Mercer's DNA ever since they joined the PSAC. Seems like they're a team that early in the season, they may take a loss here or there that you may, may scratch your head about, and then you know they get stronger as the season goes on. And it seems like uh, we're always playing them in the last one or two weeks of the yeah. season. So uh, luckily this year it's here. Uh, and, you know, senior day for, for your squad, so it's got to be pretty special um, to have senior day and a, and a tough opponent. Yeah, it's, it's, I can remember my senior day here like it was yesterday, so I'm sure our guys will be excited to play their, their last game at Adamson Stadium. Uh, it's, you know, I know that our guys will have a great week of practice and preparation to honor those seniors and everything that they've m met around here for the last, you know, four or five years. Now, for Mercyhurst, uh, we'll break their, their squad down a little bit more. Uh, offensively, um, what kind of – what kind of offensive schemes do they run? Yeah, pro style offense. They try and be balanced. They do a lot of shifts, a lot of motions. Got a got a experienced quarterback that that does a really good job. They've got two running backs that are, I think, once one has 80 carries, one might have 81. They're right there. They both have about 450 yards, so they kind of split those carries. And then they do a nice job with their pass game. They're going to get you to commit to the run, and they're going to try and take shots down the field. Uh, Nice bootleg game. They, they, they're a pro-style offense that, that takes care of the football and does a nice job. And on the defensive side, you know, you mentioned briefly that they're a hard-hitting team. They're a solid team. What kind of schemes and you know, they show? Probably a little bit different than anybody we face. They're, in fact, they're a lot like our defense. They, they base out of a 3-4, but they do jump into an even front. They play a variety of coverages, bring a variety of zone blitzes, and they'll go a little bit of zero blitz. They, they really – they're going to make our guys – have to be sharp mentally because they do so many things in, in different alignments and how they, they shift. Um, it's it's going to be a tough game for us mentally. We've got to have a great, great week of preparation to get ready for all the things that they do. And it's going to be a, a great afternoon of Vulcan football on Saturday up at Addison Stadium Senior Day. And, Coach, you know, it's hard to believe that uh, it's the end of the season right now. We're going to go to our Twitter question. Um, what makes this senior class so special to you? Just the way they show up every day, you know, from the, the first day I got here on campus, you know, two years ago till today, and they're the same guy, same guys. They show up every week ready to play, ready to compete. They love Saturday football. Um, they're just a special group. They've done everything that our staff has asked them to do from the amount of community service that we do to the different events we attend on campus to how they prepare every week and how they show up. It's, it's, it's been a joy to be around these guys. You know, there's guys that Tom Green and Luke Smory and, and Michael Keir and Rabchek and Devontae Suber and Vaughn Nell Bell. I mean, really, really good football players, but better people. And, and we're going to miss the heck out of them. So make sure to come out on Saturday, uh, one, uh, one o'clock kickoff at Adamson Stadium. But before we just end the show, we got some more stuff to talk about. We got to look at standings and scores and all that fun stuff, which I know you love. Coaches yeah. love looking at standings and scoreboards. And I didn't mean to leave <laughs> uh, any of the other seniors out, just to name a few. They're all, you know, special to us. So I'd, I'd hate to to not, you know, we're going to honor them all of them Saturday. But just to, as a group, a really good group, and probably shouldn't have named any if I'm going to leave a couple <laughs> out. So I apologize in advance. So make sure to come on out and check them out. Like, and they've had some great memories at least the last couple of years for sure. Last year being special, and this year, you know, fighting tooth and nail to, to the end of every game. And we, we got some more memories to make, that's for sure. That's what we like to hear. Let's take a look at some uh, recent memories of the scoreboard this weekend. First in the PSAC West, uh, Cal Gannon score. And uh, I typed it in wrong. It was 38-25. Uh, you're always, I'm always that good looks for good. Looks better there, <laughs> but I'm always good for one typo. I think at one point, uh, the Slipper Rock Edinburgh game, I had typed in 399 to 49. So. Might want to get that keyboard looked at, but that was a pretty big upset, if for, at least from a fan's perspective. I'm, I'm sure coaches might have a different view, but you know Edinburgh uh, winning at home against Slippery Rock by ten. Yeah, and featured a 99-yard touchdown run. You know Edinburgh is an explosive team. They they got a great passing game. Their tailbacks doing a, a really good job. We're, we're watching them over we the offense when they played at the office when they played Gannon. They've got an explosive offense, and and you know that. 
that score doesn't surprise me. They're a good football team. Like I said we had it on in the truck a little bit during a halftime, and as soon as we turned it on, the there was a 99-yard play, and it was just you know back and forth, and you know an exciting game all around. Uh, we're moving on. Clarion uh, hanging on against IP uh, at Clarion, 23-17, and Clarion had, I uh, believe, they had a field goal blocked or miss late in that game to. Uh, Kind of give IUP or seal the win for IUP. If not, you could have had an onside kick situation going on there. And Clarion playing good football right they now. They are. They're, they're a good team. Coach is doing a nice job up there. Got those guys playing hard and competing every week. And this week's opponent, Mercyhurst, uh, beating Seton Hill at home 35 to 16. And now over in the PSAC East, uh, which is always uh, almost like the opposite of the Wild Wild West because there's some crazy scores each week from that side right. of the state. Uh, Shippensburg over Millersville, 51 uh, 14. Uh, Bloomsburg over East Stroudsburg by 10, 38 to 28. Uh, Quitstown over Lock Haven 55 26 and Westchester over Cheney 55 6. So, really, probably no upsets in that on that side. Some big scores. Um, and that's all we have to say about yeah. the, the East. It's going to be interesting over there these next couple weeks. And yeah, the next couple weeks are going to determine uh, who's going to represent the West and the East in the PSAC championship game. And we can't believe it's only three weeks away, or two weeks away, if you already factor in this week as being, you know, we're in the middle of it. Let's take a look at the standings and see who has the uh, front running uh, on each side for the uh, PSAC championship. IP still uh, holding on, but a bunch of teams at three and two with two weeks left. You know, anything can happen, um, but they're five and oh, eight and all playing pretty good. You see Kyle, Slippery Rock, three and two, six and two, then Edinburgh uh, right there along with Mercyhurst, three and two, five and three. So a lot of good records on that on that side of the Yeah, uh, the it's, state. Uh, you know, we, we've got Mercyhurst this week and then a couple good clubs after that. It's, it's, it's going to be a tough stretch. You know, we, we're at home this weekend. Hopefully we'll get a big crowd up there to honor this bunch the last time they're going to play at, at Adamson. And then we go on the road for two weeks. Um, so it's, it's going to be a tough stretch, but I know our guys will, will, will be up to the task. Let's take a look at the PSAC East Ends just to get an idea of what's happening over there. Uh, and I thought they took the log jam route of Kennywood and they must have moved it on the <laughs> other side of the state because there's a log jam at the top. Ship, Bloom, Quitstown, and Westchester, all 4 and 1 in the conference or in division. And then 7 and 1, 6 and 2, 6 and 2, 6 and 2. So um, once again, you know, good football being played. Yeah. You know, everyone, every time I talk to my friends, I, I like got to realize there's, it's a good league to, to watch and, and follow because you never know what's going to happen. You're going to see some, some really exciting football. Uh, on any given Saturday. Yeah, they're, you know, obviously those four teams at 4-1 and one have all kind of beat each other. I know there's a couple big games coming mm -hmm. up, and it's going to be interesting to see how that, that shakes out over there and, and who represents that side in the state game. Let's take a look at this schedule for this upcoming week because with only two weeks left of divisional play, there's a lot on the line uh, as we come down the stretch here in the final weeks of the uh, PSAC, PSAC season. Um, Gannon at IEP, Clarion at Slippery Rock, Mercer at Cal. Uh, those are the semi-early games. Then you have a couple 2 o'clock kickoffs with East Stroudsburg at Westchester, Lockhaven at Bloom, then a 3 o'clock game, Edinburgh at Seton Hill, and then Cheney at Millersville, and then the, uh, the 4 or 5 game, Shippensburg at Quitstown. And Coach, if you're a fan and you, you, you're, you're already going to be taking, you know, watching the Mercer's Cow game because you're a good Vulcan fan, but what would be the other game you, as a fan, want to yeah, keep two, tabs on? two games jump out at me. First is the, the Gannon at Indiana game. Gannon's a really, really good football team, and they've lost a couple close games, uh, but they can run the ball probably better than – or at least as good as anybody in the league, and Indiana runs the ball really well. That's going to be an interesting matchup. And then obviously the shippensburg kutztown game has is, is got big implications on the other side. Somebody in that game is going to come out of there with two losses, and, and you know, interesting to see how that plays out. And it's that time of year that every game, you know, your game means something and two other games mean something to, to two other teams, the domino effect, and it's exciting. And make sure, like I said, best <coughs> way to uh, keep in touch with it is to check it out live at, at the stadium. Make some noise yeah. for the uh, – for the team, senior day, if for some reason, if you have a doctor's note and can't make it to Adamson Stadium, uh, you can watch CUTV live on our YouTube page, CUTV Sports 1. Uh, just subscribe to it, and you'll get a little uh, vibration or ding whenever we go live, and you can just click one link. It, may, it makes it pretty easy. Uh, but if you're out in, the, out in the yard or driving around, you can download the uh, WCAL live app because um, we have to turn the transmitter off for home games only. So that's another reason. Come on out to the stadium. Yep. Um, it's going to be a little cold, but make sure you get your red jackets and uh, noisemakers and, and make some noise because it's a great atmosphere. And like you said, it's the last yeah. time uh, we'll be seeing a lot of the seniors uh, on, the, on the home field. And then, you know, the band members will have Senior Day, too. And, they, you know, they've one of the best, you know, crowd bands, uh, fan bands in the conference because every time they're there, you, 
you kind of get a little bit more pumped up and you know, yeah. just feel, it feels like a great atmosphere. Yeah, our, our band is unbelievable. I don't know how many seniors they're, they're losing, but hopefully they'll come back to grad school and st stay with us. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a great day. Check the weather, 60 degrees. I know the tailgating is going to be going on and, and just a great day to come up and watch college football. You know, two teams that are, that are built similar that, that, are, that are going to battle and compete. And it, you know, it's probably going to come down to the wire. It seems like every game has. We're driving membership up, viewership up for you guys. Uh, but they're a really good team. But, you know, I, I know our guys will be ready to play. They're, they're going to honor these seniors. And, and, you know, it should be a great day at Adamson Stadium. Well, Coach, good luck this Saturday. And uh, like I said, fans come out to Adamson Stadium, 1 o'clock kickoff. Uh, come on out and uh, salute the seniors that have meant so much to uh, Coach Dunn and the, and the staff of the university in the last years. For Coach Dunn, I'm Gary Smith. Hope to see you Saturday at Adamson Stadium. You're watching The Gary Dunn Show right here on CUTV.